Hello and welcome to Space Time. In today's video I have an exclusive interview with Jared Isaacman from Inspiration4 and the newly revealed second crew member. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Well then, I want to introduce you to the other astronaut on Inspiration4 that no one knows about at this point. We're not releasing it until next week. So uh, we've got a astronaut Haley Arsenault coming next to me. Hi, Felix. It's nice Hello. to meet you. So you're the first, Felix. Like no, nobody else knows mm -hmm. about the uh, the second crew member of Inspiration Four. So you get like the big break. Okay. Nice to meet you. Okay. Um. So um, I've got a few questions, and we'll get into that right now. So um, question one. Um, can you explain to people who are watching, um, how they can sign up to try and get a seat on Inspiration Four? Sure. Haley, you want to take it? Yes. Um, so we have two more seats that people can come and join us in space. Um, they can go to the inspiration4.com website and donate any amount of money to St. Jude, and that will um, put them in the running to get a seat to space. And then also, um, we're bringing along an, an entrepreneur who um, is going to make a video about their business idea, and then that will be judged by um, an independent panel of judges. And okay. um, so yes, two more friends joining us. We're really excited. Cool. Um, my second question is, um, why did you choose St. Jude's Hospital to donate to? Yeah, so, um, you know, I've, uh, I've tried to support organizations like uh, St. Jude for a really long time now. And um, I think a big part of it is, um, I just know that I've been really, really fortunate and, and lucky in life. Like a lot of things have, have gone my way. And then there are a lot of families out there um, that were just dealt a really, a really lousy hand, um, you know, where, you know, one of their loved ones is going through like a really, really difficult time in life. Um, and organizations like St. Jude will help them um, and they can grow up and, you know, go on and fulfill their dreams. Uh, and that's why I want to support them, but especially so because there's a lot of work still to do um, because some of those um, people that are going through those difficult times may not have the chance to grow up and experience anything like I, what I've been fortunate enough to do. Uh, that's why we've got to like really do something about childhood cancer. We got to raise a bunch of money so that a lot of other children don't ever have to go through that again. Cool. Um, number two, um, why did you, um, what, what do you do during SpaceX training? I heard the other day that you were doing training. What, what does that entail? We're going to spend a lot of time in the simulators so like everything that we sh that could ever possibly happen up in space we've got to experience down here on earth first and like ho hopefully everything goes totally normal in which case we get to look outside and do experiments and interact with people down on earth um but if you know some things don't go totally right then we have to be trained to know what to do when they have when that happens so like every possible scenario we'll get trained in a simulator here on earth and then we get to go do some like zip lining mm -hmm. uh, from the uh, the pad in Florida where they launch the rockets. So you can do some zip lines down that and then some some time in the water because uh, that's where the spacecraft will land in the water. Cool. Um, the suit that you'll be wearing looks very different to suits that different companies use like NASA. Um, what what the what the key components of it? Well, I think from SpaceX's perspective, it's got to look cool. That was like the biggest requirement from Elon Musk is like, I don't want this, the spacesuit to look like anything else. Like I want it to look cool. I want it to like get people excited about going in space and like, you know, inspiring a whole nother like generation of people to be interested in what can happen, you know, in the world beyond ours, right? Um, but other than looking cool, it's designed to keep us safe if, um, if there's like a depressurization in the spacecraft where um, you know, the atmosphere in the spacecraft isn't sufficient to sustain life without the suit. And that's why we wear it. Cool. Um, are, you, are you at all scared or worried about going up in space? I'm not. No, not at all. We have a good commander. We're in good hands. <laughs> we, got a good, we got a good rocket. <laughs> I mean, this is, this is the, you know, SpaceX is the organization that lands rockets on ships. That's pretty cool. No one else has done that. So like, we've got some awesome technology to keep us safe. Cool. Um, what, what do you think about people going to live on the moon and Mars, setting up bases and living there? It sounds like it's the future. I think that um, that's where we're headed. I, 
I think like the SpaceX employees think that, you know, the world is a more interesting place when, you know, everyday people can go and explore among the stars. Um, so, you know, it just is, I think, in our nature to want to go out and adventure and explore and discover new things and maybe like answer some of life's greatest questions, you know, and, and those answers are probably in the world beyond ours. So the moon seems like a really nice stepping stone and then Mars and then beyond. Cool. Um, for all those people who don't really think, all the skeptics out there that, um, that don't think really going to space is the best thing, what, what would you say to them? Well, I think that um, a lot of people make a great point that there are problems here on Earth that we have to take care of first before we can go and, and kind of, you know, um, invest money and resources, um, you know, in other worlds. And I think, I think those are good points. And, and what I would say is like the way we have, you know, progress in the world is to deal with some of the problems that we have here on earth today, which is why St. Jude Children's Research Hospital is such an important part of our mission, as well as kind of make progress for the benefit of all of humanity. And there's a lot of like, you know, great things that have happened throughout history that anyone could have said, stop, this isn't important right now. We don't need airplanes. We don't need ships to discover new worlds, right? But all of those things have helped advance society for the better of everyone. So I think it's about balance. I think it's about like taking care of the issues we have here today while also making sure that we make progress, you know, as a society. And I think a lot of progress is going to happen, you know, in the world beyond ours. Yeah. Um, from from um, your life experience, what advice would you give to um, young people? Well, um, and I'll give you a little bit of background on me. So I, um, I had cancer when I was just a little bit younger than you. I was 10 years old and I actually was treated at St. Jude. And, um, and I, you know, I had a year of chemotherapy and, um, and I think personally, um, from what I've learned through my life is, um, is to expect the unexpected and, uh, and go with it and just try to keep a positive attitude. Um, because I think having a positive attitude will really get you through anything. And, um, and that's what I hope to bring into space too. Cool. Yeah, I, I think that, um, I think that, you know, everything about our mission inspiration for is about delivering like an inspiring message to the world to everyday people that there is an awful lot that we can accomplish, you know, out in space and among the stars, but there's an awful lot we can do here on earth. Um, so like, you know, I think that there's a lot of people who are going to learn about inspiration for and may never want to, you know, strap into a spacesuit or fly in a rocket, but still feel like there's amazing things that they can accomplish in life. Um, you know, that's, that's probably one of the biggest message we, we hope to deliver with this mission. Cool. Um, what, what are you, what are your future aspirations? What do you want to achieve in the future? What do you think, Kelly? Well, um, I guess on a, on a personal note, so I, uh, I've really achieved, I got my dream job at St. Jude and, um, and I just want to continue traveling the world. I think it's so important to um, learn about other cultures and, and see what's out there. And I think it really helps you grow to travel um, and then just, you know, helping people along the way, because there's so much you can do just in your everyday life to help others and, um, and make them smile. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Um, you know, and on Haley's, you know, point before, like life does throw you some some curveballs at some point. You know, life life can be really short. So I definitely feel like, you know, it's it's an obligation to try and maximize every opportunity you have in life uh, and try and do as much good on the along the way as you can, leave the world a better place than you found it. Uh, so right now it's like let's let's get inspiration for right. And then we'll figure out, you know, what kind, what is the the next adventure thereafter? Cool. Um, what does in what does your average day look like now um, during training and getting your suit fitted? Well, I, I the formal training for us hasn't begun yet because we still have two more crew members that that have to join the team. Uh, so a lot of the focus right now is this big fundraising effort for St. Jude, and you know. Um, you know, figuring out who the rest of our team members are, but then we're going to roll right into training. And I think we are going to have, um, we're going to have like a tough job of, of balancing our, our, our daily responsibilities. You know, Haley's a physician assistant. She helps patients all the time. Um, you know, I run another company, so we got to do that. 
And then we've got to learn how to be astronauts and we've got to learn how dragon works. Um, so I think we're going to be really busy for, you know, the next six months or so until we, we get ready to, to launch into space. Cool. Um, that's all the questions I've got for you today. Um, thank you awesome. very, very much for, um, I know you're a very, very busy person and, um, so, um, I'll, I'll, yeah. It was wonderful. Felix, I have a question for you. How did you get involved in, um, like, how did you get interested in space and find out about Inspiration4? Um, I, I found out about it through um, people who told me about it. Um, I, I saw it on the news once, I think. And I, I that's the first time I found out about Inspiration4. Have you always been interested in space? Um, not really. I've, I've only been interested in it for the last year or so. And mm -hmm. um, I, I think that's what I'd like to do when I'm older. Oh, wow. Well, I'm sure that you're going to do it. You seem very smart and capable. And thank you for spotlighting our mission on your channel. Thank you very much. All the best, Felix. Thank you. You too. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed today's interview, don't forget to like and subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on another video. Thanks for watching.